Hey guys, Learn the Game here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Gibbs Save Editor to mod your character in Borderlands the pre sequel. Now, uh, this tutorial is not going to be touching weapons or like shields or items. This is uh, only going to be your character itself and the stats and stuff on the character. So, as you see here, I have pretty much a blank save. I have a level 1 character with no ammo, well very very little ammo, no cash, no weapons, no skill points, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty much a blank save, however it is in Concordia with a couple of missions that it has to do, so um, I'm going to load up this save in Gibbs and get going. Alright guys, so I have the uh, save loaded up here. Now when you open up Gibbs, the first thing you're going to see are the tabs on the top. The only tabs that we're going to mess with are Character, Vehicle, Currency, Backpack, Bank, and Raw. The About tab and the General tab, you do not touch for right now. You, there's nothing in there that you need to worry about. Um, <coughs> but starting off, if you go to the Character tab, Character tab, you will see the class that you're playing. I am currently Wilhelm. The experience level, the level that you are, the amount of experience points you have, and your overpower level. level. And it will also show you the name of that character and then the head that you have equipped and the skin that you have equipped. So you can change your class from Wilhelm to Athena or Nisha or Claptrap, whatever you want to be, and it will work. However, if you mod your skill points and you change your character class, those skill points will be reset back to zero and you have to remod it all over again. So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to be doing that. However, if you do want, say, say you're Athena and you want Wilhelm, Right now it's Athena, you go, select Wilhelm, save it, and now you're Wilhelm. So, if you want to change yourself to level 50 from whatever level you are, you would go to the experience level, type in 50, and then sync your experience with it. Now for overpower, general skill points, and specialist skill points, you really don't need to touch that. But for the sake of this video, just to show you how the name works, the, game, the name was Learn to Game, I'm going to put it to YouTube. And now I'm going to change the head to none and the skin to none as well. Just because, I don't know, just to show you how it will actually change your head and your skin. So now that the character tab is all modded, you are level 50 and your name is now YouTube. And you have no head and no skin on. Like you have the, the, um, the original one, like you don't have any special one on. For the vehicle tab, you can basically change the vehicle skin that you currently have. You can change it. Um, I really don't care about this. Like I never use this, so I'll leave that alone. For currency, pretty straightforward. The amount of cash that you have, the amount of moonstones that you have, you can put in like nine, 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 whatever, like a really big number, and it'll shrink the number down to the biggest number that the the the, the Ink the program will allow. However, when you go into game, the maximum amount of moonstones that you can have is 500, and the maximum amount of cash is 900, or no, 99 million, 900, 99,000, 999. So now you have full currency, both moonstones and cash. Now, really quickly, I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'll show you guys extremely quick how to spawn in a legendary item. So you're going to go to a new weapon. If you want to spawn in a weapon. And then you're going to see all these different options here. The type is basically the type of gun. Whether it's going to be a shotgun, pistol, uh, rocket launcher, sniper, whatever. And then obviously it'll say assault rifle, launcher, pistol. And then it'll say Molly Wong, Jacob's doll, Hyperion, Band-Aid, whatever. So you want to go to the brand and the type of gun. So say I want a Torg pistol. I'll find pistol. I'll find Torg. And I'll select that. The balance is the type of Torque Pistol. Is it a legendary? Is it the Fragnum, the, the legendary? Is it a white? Is it a green? Is it a rare? Is it a like epic? The balance is where you select what type of gun it is. So, obviously, the higher the number that you see, like the higher the value, or the more rare it is. So if there's no number in the type, that means that it's common or white. If you see a 2, that means that it's green. If you see a 3, it's blue. If you see a four it's purple and if you see a five it's legendary all legendary guns will also have a name as you see here the fragnum so i'll select the fragnum 
the manufacturer is not important you could put it to torque you could type in Vladoff whatever you want to type in and it'll just basically change the text on the bottom of the gun who says the where it'll say like the manufacturer of the gun you can make a save lot off but it will not affect the gun at all now for the manufacturer grade that is basically what level you want the gun to be so you put 50 there and then the body you can basically hit the drop down on the right hand side and then select one of the options that it gives you now as you see here there are many different types of grips each grip will change the, the stats of the gun slightly and it'll change it towards what that company does. For instance, a Vladoff grip will probably make the gun shoot faster, but not be as accurate or reload as quick. Whereas TDR will make the gun reload quicker, but not shoot as fast. Stuff like that. So I'm just going to select a random one for all of these. However, if, say, for stock here, or yeah, for stock, and you click the drop down and it says none, that means that that weapon cannot come with a stock. Same thing with the element. A torque weapon, this torque pistol, the Fragnum, will not come in any other element. Like, there is no element that can come with that gun. For the accessory, you can put it to whatever you want. I prefer double, double for especially for flower torque pistols. And then you can make this, this is basically the moonshine of the gun. I'm gonna put Punisher. And the material, you can uh, select the for material there's only going to be ever one drop down that you can select there's only going to be one option there's not going to be several different options because there's only one skin for that weapon for the prefix and the title you can leave that alone the game will automatically give it the title and the prefix so there you go you just spawned in the spawned in the fragnum now if you want to copy a code you can either right click it and hit copy code or you can control c to paste the code you can either go control v or paste code in the top so as you can probably hear it, I'm pressing Control V many times, and I'm pasting that weapon over and over and over and over and over. So there you go. I basically just created a bunch of the same weapon. Now, if you want to copy the code, you can do that, and you can put it in like a Word document, and you'll copy the actual code if you want to like upload it to a forum or send it to a friend or something like that. Duplicate will basically do the same thing. It'll duplicate that weapon. Um, if you want to bank it, I'm pretty sure the banking tab doesn't work. But say you want to move a, something from your inventory to your bank, you will control C or copy it. Go to your bank and then control V or paste code. And that item or weapon will now be in your bank. So now moving on to the raw tab. The raw tab is where you do most of your modding. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is mod your, uh, your ammo. Alright, so... To mod your ammo, what you're going to do is you're going to come over to the Black Market Upgrade tab. And you're going to click it open. Now you're going to see a bunch of numbers here. And you want to replace each one of those numbers with 999999. Okay? So when you do that, you're going to, you can just control or copy that number and, and then paste it over all of the other numbers. As you see me doing right here. Okay. So when you're done with that, you're going to head down to the resource data collection tab. You're going to open that. And now on the bottom where you see upgrade level, put it to 99999 just like you did for the, uh, the black market upgrade tab. All right. So I'll put this number in the description so people can copy it if you don't know what number it is or you're lazy either or. But, um... When you're done, when you're done with that, you're gonna take this number, two one four five four eight three six four seven. All right, you're gonna copy that number, and then you're going to paste it into the amount. All right, so you're gonna go through each one, and you're gonna paste it. What you're doing is giving yourself that amount of ammo in game. When you're done with that, you're going to press OK, and you now have quote-unquote infinite ammo. So, next thing I'm going to show you is how to mod your skill tree. So, you're going to go over to the skill data tab, open it up, and then you're going to see a bunch of uh, skill data over here on the left-hand corner. Now, what this is, is basically, it's a representation of your skill tree in Word slash text form. So, you see here... 
the first one is obviously your action skill and then in the grade tab you're gonna put how many possible skill points you can possibly put into that skill or upgrade so for instance I'm putting five for all of these because I know that for the first four enforcer upgrades or Wilhelm upgrades you can put a five and then you put a one and then you can put here so one and then five 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 and then one and then I'm gonna put another five and then a one and then a five and then a five and then another five and then a one so what I just did is the grade is how many skill points you have in each skill or upgrade so you want to put the maximum amount that you possibly can and in order to know that maximum amount you either a have to memorize it or b you can take a picture of your skill tree on your phone or look a google image or something or look up the google image of your skill tree that way you know what skill or how many skill points you can put into each skill and then you can just correspond that to the name of the skill so for instance i know that omega strike you can only put one skill point in it so my grade's going to be one but whereas uh uh, escalation I can put five so I'm gonna put five skill points in there now you're gonna do this for all three sub trees that you have for your character now keep in mind that the order will not be the same for some characters as it was in other sub trees for instance for Nisha for Nisha and for Claptrap their skill trees vary from tree to tree okay so it's gonna be a bit weird so you have to uh, you have to go back and you have to look at each skill and you have to know how many uh, times or yeah how many times you can use a skill point in that skill alright so I'm gonna finish up my uh, enforcer really quick okay so that should be the last one huh. alright I messed up somewhere up here so five, 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 one, five, one, five, five, five. That should be a one. Okay. And then five, 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 one, five, one, five. Five, five, and then finally one. Okay, so I had that memorized because I've done this before. So I, I memorized how many skill points I could put in each skill. Now I'm going to show you how to mod your quest data so that you can either A, complete a quest, B, make it ready to be turned in, or C, collect a reward for a quest that you've already turned in and already collected the reward to so you can collect the reward again so what you're gonna do is you're gonna head over to the mission playthrough and you're gonna click on that the collection and then you're gonna see three different tabs here okay the top one is for your normal for your normal playthrough the middle one is for your true vault hunter playthrough and then the bottom one, I'm not too sure what that's for. However, it may be for overpower, but don't quote me on that because I'm not too sure. So, for instance, if you want to mod your True Vault Hunter save optional quest or your story quest, you're going to go to this one, the middle one. If it's normal, you're going to go to the top. So, I want to mod my True Vault Hunter mode, so I'm going to go to there. And when you're in that, that uh, tab, you're going to select Mission List. And then you, you're going to see Mission Data and then a bunch of uh, side tabs, okay? Now, on the right-hand side, you're gonna see Needs Reward, Mission, Ace from DLC, Herd, Kickoff, Game Stage, and all this other stuff. So, you're also gonna see a status bar, and it's either gonna be Not Started, Active, Required, ob Objectives Complete, return, Ready to Turn In, Completed, or Failed. So, you can, if you have a quest, let's say that's active, let's see if I have any active. See, so I have an active quest right there. I can change that to complete and it will be done. However, warning, warning, warning. Do not change any story quests 
to complete. Okay, I'm warning you right now. What's going to happen if you change a story quest to complete is that that quest is going to be complete. However, you will no longer be able to progress in the storyline because you will not be eligible to pick up the next quest. And the reason for this is because the game or the the modding pro uh, software program, whatever, will complete the quest but you, it will not pick up the next quest. And when you go in game to the quest giver, they will assume that you're already on the next quest because you can't not take the next story quest. Like you have to take the story quest quest right after you turn in the previous one. So if you want to mod your story quests, you have to set it to ready to be turned in and then physically go turn it in yourself. Do not set it to complete or else you will not be able to move or progress in the storyline because you will not be able to pick up the next story quest. With that being said, if you have any optional quests, which all these are, you can change it from active to complete and you will automatically get a reward. Also, if you want to collect a reward from a quest that you already have turned in or from a quest that you put to completed, you're going to check off the need reward box. Okay? So I'm going to do this for a couple just to show you exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so do this for a couple more. And then I'll be done with that. Alright, so I selected the needs reward box for a few different quests. And now I'm done. So I'm going to press OK. And then OK. So now I have set quests that were active. And I turned them to complete. And then I gave myself a reward for quests that I've already completed or quests that I just set to completed. So now, what we just did, if we just modded our ammo, our skill tree, our quests, we've spawned in duplicated or we've spawned in uh, weapons, duplicated them, put them in our bank, and then we've maxed out our currency, and then we've also changed your character level, either changed your class if you wanted to changed your name, the header skin that you had on you, and your experience points. And so basically, you've just changed all of that. So a level 1 character is now completely level 50 with all this other stuff to it. Okay, so I'm going to I'm I'm head over to Borderlands, turn on my fraps, and show you the finished product. Alright guys, so I'm back and I have my character loaded up. I'm going to see what changes we have made to that character. So, as you see, I didn't really mod in a shield or anything. However, it gave me a shield and I can choose these quest rewards because I selected I need the reward for those quests. So those quests that I said that give me the reward, it gave me the reward. However, I don't want any of this stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop it all. And now these are the legendaries that we made and that we duplicated into our backpack. Okay? So as you see, all these legendary pistols that we duped in, we can now use. Alright, so... So we just modded, we spawned in this weapon, this Tory pistol, and we duplicated it, and if, I'll go to the vault in a second, but um, there should be two in the vault. Now, we have a full skill tree, as you see here, but also it's important to remember and notice that we have full currency, max cash, and max moonstones, as well as an insanely buffed, or modded, uh, ammo capacity and ammo. So that is basically how you mod your character using Gibbs Save Editor. Um, yeah, so you can mod anything you want to mod that I showed you in the video. I'll be making a separate guide alone on how to mod your weapons because modding weapons is a lot more difficult than doing this uh, stuff that I just showed you. But um, if you found this tutorial useful, please subscribe or like the video or both if you're really feeling uh, generous. Also, leave feedback in the comment below. Like, say if I talked too much, if I was good, if I did a good job explaining it, if I didn't do a good job, if I need to make it shorter, make it longer, whatever you felt, leave it in the comment section below because it definitely helps me out in knowing what you guys want to see.
and how I did myself so I know what I need to work on myself. Also, if you have a tutorial suggestion, leave it in the comment and I'll definitely take a look and I'll either make a video or I'll explain it to you what you need to, what you need to know in the comment below. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye.